is really a placeholder. The pencil is not my favorite tool in the wood shop. However, okay, so I don't know how many of you grew up wearing overalls. I grew up in Kansas on a farm in the 50s and 60s. I wouldn't have been caught dead in a pair of overalls. In fact, my father and his generation, the World War II group, they didn't hardly wear overalls. It was just the old guys that wore overalls. In fact, my grandfather, I don't think I have a memory of my grandfather that wasn't in overalls. But how many times have you worn yourself out chasing a pencil around the shop ah, when look at the wonderful place overalls has for them? There are more benefits. You'll notice there's no belt here. Now, when you're young, that isn't a big deal. <laughs> I can tell some of you recognize the utility of not having a belt. Not only that, the pockets are big. You can reach down in your pockets and pull out things. The old watch fob holder up here, you don't need that anymore, probably for your pocket watch, but it sure makes it easy not to run all over the shop chasing your glasses. Let's see. Oh, there's, there's loops here that you may be able to see that you can stick a square down into, because I'm always, by the time I chase down my pencil, my glasses, my square, my ruler, I'm worn out. And maybe the neatest thing about overalls is when you've got your remote control to your vacuum system, which you can chase all over, and you can put it around your neck without overalls. But when you lean over, you only have to catch it in the saw blade once to realize that's not a really good idea. <laughs> overalls are before their time. It's back there, out of the way, and safe. <laughs> and the ubiquitous cell phone. Look at how you know, progressive these overall people were. They've got pockets right up there for them. I'm telling you, overalls are the way to work in a wood shop, and I, I've had a couple of you mention that you already wear them in, in the shop, and somebody else has them on here already. And warmer, too. <laughs> and in the summertime, you don't have to wear a shirt, and you can cut them off for shorts. Just kind of curious, does it have a back flap? Does, does it have a back flap? No, that would be long underwear. <laughs> Thank you. Here, so I can do it later. Oh, there it is. Uh, I've been recently been getting into more of the segmentation in intarsia, and I'm not real fond of sanding, and that requires a lot of sanding. And I found that this tool really works well for that bulk removal of wood because you're you're trying to get various sizes and and I don't have you know every thickness of walnut and every thickness of cherry and every thickness of wenge and all this kind of stuff so you're, you're, you're bending to sand the thickness a lot of times and this really works well to get rid of a lot of material fast uh, if I'm sanding something and I want to get through the thickness. You've got the table here. You can lay it, lay your piece down here, and just slide. And you're staying pretty square. It's not going to be perfectly square by any means, but you're staying pretty square as you're sanding maybe an eighth of an inch off of that or something like that to get it to the right thickness. Once you've got it to the right thickness, then you can start your rounding process, and you can get inside and work the pieces pretty good. You can't do everything. Because you know something like this, you're, you're just not going to be able to do with that because it's. Uh, 
and you got to be a little careful with it. If you get in there and you're not watching yourself and you catch an edge on it, it'll gouge pretty fast. But that you learn pretty quickly enough. I went to this. I started with the normal drum type, you know, foam backed sanders, and I was sanding my knuckles as much as I was the wood, and that hurts. Uh, so I, I found because then I can get in and I'm moving around and I don't hit my knuckles because there's nothing there to hit. So it's it's it saves my knuckles a lot. Uh, so this is really good for rough shaping of the entire pieces. Does, uh, set, does the dust collection work pretty well on that? I know that you no. <laughs> it, it does. It does help some, but it's not. Um, it's not perfect by any means. As you get into here, you get a lot. You get. I get a lot of dust that comes out from here. You know, it, it's. There's a hole here, but there's. The sand is coming off on this side, but the hole is mostly on the back. So it's. <laughs> it doesn't work real well, but it does do some good. And 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 if I'm doing, if I'm doing, starting to do more fine stuff. I, I just I, I just turn off the vacuum. There's there's really not doing any good. But if I'm doing a lot of removal, then I'll then I'll put put the vacuum on it, and uh, it does help keep keep it out of the air somewhat. I'm sorry. Did you mention the name on that? Who This one's Harbor Freight. Okay. But there's uh, and I I, I wouldn't buy, probably wouldn't buy another one of these. They're, they're inexpensive and they sound that way. Uh, <laughs> I would I would go you know this one was about uh, because it's got this it was like seventy five dollars you're actually better off going to the extra fifteen dollars and buying a Ryobi or one of the, the, the name ones uh, they're they're a lot quieter this is this is a real noisy beast so if I'm keeping on the same theme if I'm going into uh, If I'm starting to do want want to get into these corners like this, I get this bit for my Dremel. You know, for the longest time I was like, "What the heck would I ever use that for?" It's perfect for getting down in these pieces here and cleaning those out and rounding those over and start start doing your finished shaping. Now you're not going to do your finished sanding with this, but it, because this is a like an 80 grit. But it, it does it does a real nice job of finishing up that sanding, um, and it also it sometimes you want to do with some features on you, some grooves and things like that. If you cut it, come in at an angle like this, you'll actually cut a pretty nice groove and do do some of that texturing and featuring type work on, on it. And then when I'm finished, I'll use this flap sander for the Dremel, and that actually does. Uh, a pretty good job of smoothing it up, getting it fairly fairly smooth all the way around, and then I'll, when I'm finished, I'll just touch it up a little bit with a two, 220 or 320 for the, the, for the final sanding. It gives the final finish on it. So these have become very quickly my favorite tools to work with. <laughs> they're a lot e I think they're a lot easier to work with than the big uh, drum things. So how many people, when they're drilling, they like to use sharp drill bits? Anybody like dull drill bits? I have lots of dull, or did have. This is a drill sharpener, and I'm, I'm pretty, it's not necessarily one of my favorite tools, but it is a tool that I, when I need it, I'm glad I bought it kind of thing. Now, this is for standard drills, not for brad points. So, for those guys using only brad points, uh, this this doesn't work for that. So, let me plug it in, because we're actually going to. What's the cost? This is uh, about $70 on Amazon. There are, uh, this company makes a bunch of different models. There is a model below this for about 50 something. This one has an advantage and I'm going to show that. So anyway, um, I got this at Lowe's. I want to take, this is just a plug and of course it normally comes right out. It's just a it has nothing to do except it's a plug. So, not sure how to do it here. So it, so it has the, this is the chuck, and it takes uh, one eight to half inch bits, I believe. Uh, 
I'm not sure about the half inch, but it definitely does three eighths. So you start by taking the drill bit and turning the chuck until it's snug, but not so it'll slide. Now, and I don't know if you can see, it's all black, so it's hard to see. This, this device, this chuck has two notches. Can we see that? Okay, so uh, it's, it's really hard to see because it's all black, but it, there's two tabs here. And then on here are some notches for the degrees and it'll do, it's, it's for 118 which is the normal uh, angle of twist drill bits and you can go plus or minus about two or three degrees by just selecting a different slot here for the tab. So you start out by extending the bit pushing I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I'm right-handed, so um, good. it goes in, and what I'm doing is I'm taking, there's two tabs, and I'm aligning the tabs in the middle slot, which is the 118. It, it just locks in. It can't, it can't go anywhere. Then this device here aligns the um, drill bit, and the length and the position of the drill bit that's going to be cut on the diamond wheel inside. So we're going to take this, going to make sure it's lined up, and then I'm just going to... So now I have the drill bit ready to be sharpened. So we go over to the other end of the machine, and I again I'm right-handed, so maybe we can do it left-handed. <laughs> So this this end is um, for for taking the the two surfaces down. Now before I do it, the reason I got this, I had occasion to drill 16 holes in quarter inch angle iron, or actually it's really not iron; it's mild steel angle. Yeah. So I had about at least a half a dozen quarter inch bits. And none of them made a dent in the steel. I mean, I could, and I was having to do it with a hand drill. I didn't have the uh, real press. These were too large. So I went down to uh, Lowe's and looked, and they had this one, and I ended up buying it, although it was a little more money than I thought. And after running it through this, which I'll demonstrate, it cuts through steel like butter, the same drill bits. And of course, uh, with got some uh, red oak, fairly hard wood, and it's really nice for, for wood. So uh, there's two operations. Now the, the normal low-end $50 version is, is up, up to what I've shown you is on that version. So uh, it's really pretty easy. We just twist. What this does, instead of it just grinding around, it cams the drill bit so you, it, it gets the right conduit. And that's what you heard. It was, as I turn this, it's not just turning, it's rocking. So now the drill bit is pretty sharp. But it turns out that there's another, and let me, um, here it is. There's another operation that is the, you know, the extra money for this version. These are already done. I'll pass a couple around. And it's this, this thing right here on the side. It's using the same diamond wheel, but the drill bit's going to go in a different direction. And what it, what I'll pass around, it's a little hard to explain it. It recontours the end. And what it gives you is much faster cutting. The drill tends not to walk at all and you get almost no tear out on the other end. So, and this was, you know, between the $50 and the $70, $20 for this. So, to use this, it's pretty easy as well. Turn it back on. Again, it's using the tabs to make sure this is positioned correctly. So, you put it in. That's your grinding away part of the tip. 
You can't really see what it's doing. It's yeah, they, they, the sequence is this way. Then I'm just turning it over 180 again. It locks into two slots so you can't screw up. Okay. And actually I got ahead of myself because I was going to show you before this was sharpened and how it, it really would not cut the oak at all. So let's see if it works. And how small a drill bit will it? One eighth. One eighth. And up to at least three eighths. I'm not sure it'll do a half. I only did a, up to three eighths. So. Let's see how this works. Can you see this? Should I do it over here? I'm, I'm barely, I'm barely, just barely pushing down through oak. Um, here's the back. There is, well, of course, this is oak, but there's really no tear out at all. And the, the bit will, um, of course, in oak it's pretty easy. Dual bits don't tend to wander in oak. But there is no, I mean, that, that's basically just almost no pressure. There's no walking. And it cuts through like butter. So, I think it's a great tool. It was expensive. But, I'll, you know, once you have these really sharp drill bits to do whatever, I... I wouldn't want to go back so that's it I don't use this very often but I have found now that and and I did a bit from scratch you know a bit that is just dull and and needs to be but once you recontour it and sharpen it you just have to hit it about three times to re you know get it super sharp again so that's it for those people that uh, want to what was the brand on that Jim? oh this is drill doctor and this particular uh, uh, model is XPK. This was in uh, Lowe's. Lowe's. One of the things about when you're doing a sharpen your bit, it's important that you make the even, same amount oh, of turns on each side. And I meant to say I was counting. I did 12. <laughs> yes, that's correct. When you once you got your bits redone and they're you know they're getting a little dull, you can just do like four. You know, you, all you're doing is just slightly taking away the dull edge um, just if you pull one out of your this one hasn't been done but if you pull one out of your box of drill bits and it takes you know 12 or so Jim, what's turning there you showing it it's got those guys to fit the oh. slot what what part of it turned through well okay so inside there's a diamond wheel yeah, I know that. I mean, okay, so so yeah, I'll do it without the bit. So let's see if we can. So there's. Um, I'm sorry, that's the wrong side. So here, this is the side that you uh, set the drill bit. It's basically just turning inside of of this sleeve, but the sleeve has been configured so that instead of instead of it turning, can you see it rock? And that's part of the uh, the contouring of the, as opposed to just doing it on, say, a grinder where you're. I, I was never very good at sharpening on a grinder. I tend to get the center off, and, and of course, uh, Brad Point solves all those problems. But actually, once you do this recontouring and making the bit, it Brad Points obviously are not going to wander at all. But the wandering is almost nil with once it's been recontoured on. Any other questions? Again, it's a little bit expensive. Um, I'm not, I'm certainly not, uh, I've never regretted buying it once I saw what it would do. Maybe you can drill some holes in this stuff. <laughs> This, this uh, is my <coughs> new favorite tool. Now, I have other tools that are you know, very utilitarian. Uh, this I use a lot, but it's just, you know, utility, you know, I carry it around. Um, recently, I've started doing a lot of work with the uh, Methodist men and then also working in conjunction with Habitat. 
and we had a project came up and they needed some siding replaced uh, and it's that old uh, Louisiana Pacific uh, siding and we're all familiar with that and uh, they, they didn't really have a uh, budget to replace which you know if it were my house I would replace all 20 square uh, but they didn't have that so I had to go through and assess what was really bad and what wasn't so we wound up replacing about three square well any of you who have worked with the fiber cement knows that uh, when you use the saw it can be difficult at best you got to wear a respirator and you're trying to cut and your glasses fog up and you can't see your line and just, and it's just dust all over, you know, and nasty dust. Uh, so, I found out, because I did some research, this is, as I said, my new favorite tool. This is a fiber cement shear, so built by Makita. So, this uh, does a very good job, uh, I don't know if you can uh, see, but, uh, it has a pretty wide curve, <laughs> uh, but you know it doesn't matter when when you are looking at that versus dust all over because uh, we did all of this. We got some pieces. This is the factory factory edge, and this is the cut edge from this year. And uh, we can go ahead and uh, I'll pass that around if y'all want to look at that. Now, the thing is, all you need is a line. Now, I, I have two. So, yeah. so, um, big pair of scissors. So, to give you an idea, we'll just make a straight cut on this one. That's it. So, my new best tool for big project. I do? Yep. I don't know how many of you use wood blocks or sandy blocks, but when I found this little gem, I just couldn't pass it up. It's called, oh, I'm sorry. It's called a sand devil, even though it says craftsman on the side. Uh, but it um, uses regular sanding belts, three by 21, I think. Uh, the neat thing about it is you just got this thing on the side, loosens it up, and you slide it off and on your next one. You can keep rotating it to use all the way around. It has all these neat little angles and has a nice big flat surface. So if you're doing a big sanding job, it really bites into it and gets it done quick. And uh, if you're doing like corners, you can slide the belt off just a little bit, and tighten it, and you've got that good strong belt edge on there to get down in the corners and then you just use this to clean it off with and it's great. I love it. So I was walking out of the house I was going I don't have a favorite tool mm. <laughs> and all of a sudden I went I'm always looking for that <laughs> and you you say well it's just a tape measure. Uh, the unique thing about this one though is uh, I don't know if you can read it it's self-centering and I'm always breaking down boards and they're too long for any other measuring device I got. The advantage of this is you can measure the width of something. This is 28 inches, but then on the other side is half of that. So I know the halfway point is 14 inches. Yeah, that's easy to figure out mentally, but what if it's 23 and 5 eighths? You know? Are you going to divide 23 and 5 eighths by 2 so you can figure out where the center of that is? Okay, and the other side is uh, exactly half of the uh, whole unit. So I don't know if you can focus on that or not. Yeah. But uh, for instance, at 3, uh, this is 3 inches, but the other side is marked 1 and a half in red. Okay, and it's very useful for me. This is what caused my Christmas holiday for those who went to the yeah, Thursday. Wait. They went to the Thursday, went to the Thursday thing. This is what caused me. I don't know why, you know, everybody has one. Everybody has a DVD or a CD or something or, or a program that they watch that, that hit, a, hit a button you like. His, his stuff hit the button, and I, like I said, I've made a lot of it. Um, 
along that same line thanks to thanks to a guy by the name of Dan in the back he made my tools so I could do the Ellsworth grind and he ground them for me and so I had to get so I could do them myself because I found out in doing that when you you know when I was doing onesie twosies it was not a problem but when you do a number of them if you don't have a sharp tool it's a pain in the butt so you know so I had to so I had to get my Ellsworth grind so I can so now I could do that and along that same line while I was at at different places I picked these up at yard sales and whatever didn't know what they were used for or what they were for, but this bec has become my favorite tool for making my bevel in the bottom so I can put it on my chuck. And you know, if you're not good like I am, you get catches. This thing you can make roundovers and it doesn't catch at all. No matter what you do, it will not catch and it makes a nice, nice roundovers. It makes in the spindles, it'll make the nice thing. So that, I found out it's a great tool. They call it a, a round pointing tool is what they call it. It's got three, if you can look at it, it's got three, three bevels and how it works. I want to say somebody did a demonstration and had a, had a wood one here just like this. This is a, this is your, on the back side, you can use it to, I must have lost it. But I had a, if you have a block, if you have a block of wood and you need to do it, it's got the it's got the way I can I can I can center it, okay. But the part I like is the fact that on the front, and that's what I'm saying. The guy did a did a, did a test for it. What you can do is, i.e., if I need to make, let's say I need to make this one inch, okay. So now I'm one inch. This is my favorite tool, and I brought the block of wood and I didn't bring it, but this is the tool that I use. That's my favorite tool on the scroll saw side. It's the tool I use when I need to, when I need to make something, and I need to make sure that the pattern I put on this side of the wood and on this side of the wood or at the same at the same thing you just draw the line and that gives me exactly uh, parallel lines so that's my favorite view for scroll saw and then when I was doing the when I was doing his stuff on here of course this one right here is turning for food well if you're turning for food most of them you don't you you want to use some kind of uh, a sealer or whatever so it can be food related so in his case he's using the same thing I use for my kids puzzles which is mineral oil and beeswax well of course when I'm getting his video and stuff I had mineral oil and beeswax but my mineral oil and beeswax was in this form which is I basically take mineral oil I take a bottle of mineral oil dump it in a saucepan and then I take a block of beeswax and just take a potato peeler and just start, you know, doing doing the peels and putting them in the putting them in a sauce tat until until it gets to a nice consistency. <laughs> then I cool it off and now it becomes a paste. And so that's what I use to finish finish some of the things like the the honey dipper and those type things that I was using that were made for food. So he uses the, he just puts on the mineral oil like you would a uh, a wipe on finish and then he takes the uh, beeswax and and uses it as a, like a varnish. Like you would a varnish, a varnishing wax. Is that correct, Turners? But anyway, so but I'm saying I just had this, so I used this, and it seemed to work fairly well. So that's my things. I know it's more than one. So um, I'm I'm probably like a lot of you guys. Oh, I, um, I have uh, I'm a, a CPAP patient, so uh, I have a. Uh, leftover CPAP machine and I thought well I, I could use that as a uh, to res be a respirator on my lathe I know it's not an original thought some guy put an article in the American Association of Wood Terms magazine but um, uh, I had left my uh, CPAP machine in my mother-in-law's house in Kansas where we visit most frequently so that was my spare so I uh, was there at Christmas time and I uh, reclaimed it 
So I put it up there in that little plastic box. So the leftover CPAP machine was free. That uh, box there was $3.50 at Home Depot. And it's got that little plastic thing as a door. I can reach up in there and turn it on real easy. And um, it, it didn't have a lid for some stupid reason. I guess that's why it was $3.50. So I just took a, an air filter and uh, bungeed that on the top. Leftover air, or air filters left over because we uh, redid the furnace, so that was free. And the bungee strap was in the camping gear, so that was free. And uh, I did have to put one more hose on there, so it's two, two lengths of uh, CPAP hose to the mask that I already had. So everything was uh, pretty free. And that thing is great because uh, nice cool air across your face. Uh, I'm more willing to wear that uh, than I was with the mask originally because, you know, you get your breath up on the, on the face mask. So... Uh, it's great for sanding and it's great for, you know, provides you the, the protection from flying stuff off the lathe. So uh, that was, that's uh, one of my new favorite tools. I think I have another one. Well, I just drilled a hole in the top and I used uh, little bits of, uh, you know, those plastic, uh, not plastic, but the rubber, uh, you know, uh, dust collection port type things. Just find one that's about the right size and the CPAP hose just kind of snapped into it. So I used a spring to suspend it up over my head. One thing I found was as I moved around, <clears throat> you have to have the right amount of range on the hose. And then um, if you have too much, then it hangs down in front of your face, which is not good either. So the other uh, favorite uh, tool that's uh, in this picture is... Uh, is my uh, vacuum chuck for the lathe which I just finally put it together. I, I bought that vacuum about a year and a half ago and never got around to it but I put it in this little box up here. I don't know if you can see the, the little hose. Uh, so uh, and, and it's got the, the rigging and the uh, you know the hose that goes into the headstock of my lathe <coughs> and uh, that really uh, made a big difference in, to me because I my, uh, the bottom of my bowls would always have a knob or a, 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 a scratch or a, maybe a scrape where it came came out of the out of the thing and then this right here just flip this around stick it on the vacuum chuck and you can make it like it was the bottom of a bowl like the inside of the bowl so uh, that's uh, that's revolutionized my uh, lathe turn so. okay that's it uh, I don't think this would qualify as a tool but I use it more than any tool I have in the shop because it's so versatile. It's a, uh, it's something I put together from a, from a IKEA light. Uh, I used their base, and I adapted a, a magnet. Uh, actually, I'm doing it the hard way. You can release this just by pushing it down. Uh, tool, I mean a light, because it'll fasten to any metal. If you got your lathe, if you want to put it on your bed, you can in, inside of a tool in a in a that, or you can clip it to. Well, that's a little thick. You can clip it to a two by four uh, piece of wood and bend it to wherever you want it to go. Uh, I've never seen anything like it. I kind of come up with a concept of you know trial and error. I went through a couple of versions. Uh, this is a three H piece of uh, a plywood. Uh, I use the base as my jig to uh, drill the holes. There's a couple little screw lugs. In fact, I brought the light the way it comes. There's a metal base and then it has a plastic cover that goes over the base. And what I do, I take the plastic cover, I cut the hole out, the center out, so that the magnet will fit in the plastic, uh, it, it, it kind of locks the magnet in. So you've got a magnet, you've got a light, and you've got a base. Now if you just want to set it on your counter, you can leave it in the base. But you can use it in so many different ways. I mean, it's just, it's so handy. This magnet is, uh, was on sale at the Harbor Freight, two for $3.98. It, in other words, $2 a piece. It comes with a little hook on the magnet. The, you, it's made to hook, hang stuff. Just drill out the center of the, the rivet, 
put a little quarter inch bolt. I used a little uh, uh, carriage bolt and uh, it's got room on the inside. It's got inset that your nut doesn't stick out, doesn't protrude. So you can stick it on anything. You can put it on your bed of your lathe like this and then stick it in a bowl. You know, you can use it. So when I store it, uh, this is your little trans. I guess a transformer. Yep. Uh, it fits inside there. That clamps down, and then you just wrap this around, uh, and it, it has a little slot underneath there that that wire will wind right up in it. Uh, and uh, that just snaps under there, and it you can put it on a shelf, store it out of the way. Okay, it's got a nice bright light. I mean, it'll, you can get inside something and put it wherever you want it. The breakdown on the light, the light is 10 bucks, 9.98 at IKEA. Okay, uh, it comes with the base and the plastic. Now, the plastic sh shroud here, I, I fastened that to the metal base with the 3M double face foam tape. So there's just little strips of uh, tape underneath this plastic to hold this to the base. It comes with a, a pad in here. It's kind of a rubberized pad that sticks on the bottom of this metal base. Uh, and uh, so that it makes it, you know, you don't have to use this. My two of them uh, on my uh, scroll saw. My band saw, I've got two. Now I make them, I also make them, this one here will show you that uh, I didn't use the clamp, I just used the magnet piece of wood. If it's something I want a permanent mounted on, but still have it flexible, I, I just used the magnet and the piece of wood and I didn't put a clamp on it. And then this is my band saw. Uh, this is my, obviously my scroll saw. Uh, drill press. Uh, again, just just with the magnet and a piece of wood, and because that's permanent. Now the switch, the switch, I put Velcro on the back of the switch. If I use it on a permanent uh, piece like a drill press, I just stick it to where I want it to turn on and off on the, with a Velcro on the back. On the bottom of these base of these lights, there's little lugs, these two little screw lugs that goes in the, uh, that's made to go in the base. I use them as my, uh, uh, they're perfect for a 3 8 piece of plywood. They'll, they'll tighten right down, the screws will tighten right down on a piece of plywood, uh, like this here, and uh, tighten right up on the wood. Uh, and again, this is just pictures on my lathe. I put two of them on the top of my lathe. Now this is before I come up with this flat magnet. This was another magnet I had, but this is a much better way to do it with the round flat magnet than this one. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see what else. Anyway, these are just here's a picture of the base by itself, just with the magnet and a piece of wood. You can put this any place you want it. Here, here I got. Here's my switches. I velcroed to the top of the uh, machine there. Uh, to turn them on off and you can actually where you use two lights I've actually taped two of these and just took electrical tape and uh, taped them together so you can just pick it up and squeeze both of them you turn two lights on at once if you I got two lights on my grinder and it, they're, they're, they're mounted to the center of the uh, grinding motor with velcro and you can put one on each wheel and if you really want a lot of light which you don't need you can swing in both of them over to one wheel, so that works. <coughs> anyway, that's that was my project that I kind of put together, and like I say, tax and all, you probably got less than 15 bucks in that. The light itself is 10 bucks. The clamp is uh, Harbor Freight was less than two dollars. The magnet was less than two dollars. That's how I came up with a little tax. You got 15 dollars in it uh, total. When Walt was up here, he said he, he didn't like sanding, and I, I can vouch for that. I, I never did like puzzles, and I didn't like sanding, and I ended up in doing intarsia, which is nothing but puzzles put together by sanding them. So, <laughs> so I take any shortcut I can get for sanding. 
Marcus and I were talking about what we could bring today, and he, men he mentioned this. This has been great for us. We, uh, we do a lot of small sanding, and uh, this clamp is, is self-adjusting, so it'll, it'll go anywhere from a real thin piece to, to, to a thick piece without, without having to adjust it. They're available here. <coughs> and when we put something in there, they're, they're little small pieces. We do a lot of inside sanding as well. So if you got something that's got a hole in it, you take your, your sandpaper, put it down through the hole, and you sand around the edges. There's nothing, nothing on an intarsia or, or segmentation that has a square edge on it. Everything is, everything is sanded off so that you get just a slight, slight round bit to it. And this has been a great tool for us. I do not use the, the, uh, the board here for the... Uh, the dust, dust session because you don't get that much it'll collect up in here this, this is the first time Mark has seen it clean <laughs> he comes to my shop right regular and uh, it's, it's quite dusty but uh, I've always used the uh, uh, aluminum oxide uh, sanding paper because it, it lasts so much longer you take a piece, piece of regular sanding paper and about two times like that and it'll break the aluminum oxide is, is tough and doesn't last a long time. Uh, but Marcus was over at uh, uh, his shop the other day, and he, he came up with some, uh, he, he cuts up these discs. This, this is the disc, and it, it works just as well as the aluminum oxide. And <clears throat> contrary to what Walt thinks, I got one of those in storage. I don't even use it. I don't like them. <laughs> but I do use the one he mentioned that has the, the foam back on it. However, when I want to cut a lot off of a piece, I've got another uh, sander that's a drum sander that has, uh, uh, you, can put, you, uh, you can pump it up. It, it's filled up with air. So I keep it good, and I only use a 120 grit on both of them. But I can go over to that one, it's pumped up real tight, and I can cut it down in no time flat. And then go to this one, this one has a foam, foam on the back of it, so you, you can finish them off real nice with that. That's it. So I brought a couple of items. And one I want to talk about, I'm big on safety. And um, usually my go-to item in my, uh, that I talk about a lot is uh, safety glasses and, of, of course, ear, ear, ear protection and dust protection. So the um, type of um, safety glasses I like, these are the over-the-glass type safety glasses for myself since I wear glasses. And this brand is Elvex brand. So I started out with this type, so they fit nice and comfortably over my glasses. Let me get a shot of that. So I bought it online, um, I think through Amazon. So I usually wait till everything goes on sale and I usually pick them up. So these are these are light, lighter weight um, and they, these are clearer. So I'll keep these on while I do my presentation. And for hearing protection, I have like, a, I think that's a 29 um, rated um, headphone. And the thing I like about this, this brand is that, well, what I like about this type is that it's bright and yellow. And like somebody mentioned about their bright colored um, tape measure, this is, this is easy to find in my shop. So when I'm, when I'm, when I'm actually looking for something to, to, to quiet out the noise, um, this is my go-to item. Um, last year I brought in some measuring devices, um, calipers and things like this, digital calipers and also um, items that are digital to help you measure angles um, on your table saw and things like that. So that one I bought from Harbor Freight. It was on sale, I think about 10 or $12. And um, it helps me um, um, measure the angle on my, um, my, my blade on my table saw. So if I need to get like an exact measurement and not rely on, on the, um, the markings, this is probably a go-to item. Um, this has one um, set of um, magnets, so it'll, it'll actually clamp on either to the um, the base of your table, so you could um, get a zero reading, and also you could clamp it onto the um, the, the the blade, the saw blade. Um, this one is sort of unreliable. It's a Harbor Freight item, so it lasted um, uh, probably a couple of years or whatever. Then it started acting kind of funny, and so I ended up um, upgrading, and I started getting. I got the eye gauging one, which is a little bit better. And a little beefier, and this one is um, 
is slightly different. This has three sets of magnets. So the one on the left, right, and also on the base. So depending on how you want to um, clamp it onto your different devices, um, this is probably a good item to get. I like eye gauging items a lot, so I end up buying um, one of the um, depth um, gauge from eye gauging and also other eye, eye gauging items. I was also into calipers, and last year I brought in this thing, my little caliper that measures inside diameters, outside diameters, and also depth of um, items using this end here. And what I was trying to do is actually modify and use it on my um, drill press and also table saw to actually measure um, distances between my fence and things like that. So I, I, I usually try to attach this and try to somehow modify and I've, I've seen different modifications online where somebody would probably grind and what I did was I ground down the um, The, the tips and everything in order to put it onto like either my, my drill press or the um, table saw. And I realized I was sort of like um, constricted because this only goes out to six inches and I wanted something a little bit larger. So I was pricing the 12 inch ones and then the 12, 24 inch ones and they started getting a little pretty pricey. And then I went online, I, I started looking at some of the machine shops, what they're using and they're using digital readout um, display um, um, measuring devices which is what I had next. So this thing now is pretty cool. So this item is actually, so this is more of a remote um, item. So the measuring, the item that you need to measure, the distance is actually measured on this, um, this um, bracket, um, the, the bar here. And as it slides, it'll give you different readings of um, the distance that it travels. So this particular one is a 12 inch one and you get six, 12 inch, 24 inch, and also 30, 35 inch um, varieties. And also this is eye gauging. So this one does measurements in inches, um, inch with the decimal place or inch and fractional readings, and also metric readings also. So you can switch out um, toggling the, the, the various measurements. And what I did was I actually attached it to my table saw. So on here, yeah, this is a bright, it's too, too much glary. Got it? Okay. All right. So I, I had to buy um, a two inch angle bracket and attach it to the bottom of my um, table saw um, rail and then attach that, um, the, I bought a 24 inch um, one on the left side and I could actually um, attach the other part of the fence. And I could attach the other part of the fence below it which attaches to this base part here and it slides and it could slide on, on the bar and get you um, readings. The only thing, um, it's kind of weird. This is a craftsman table. So I get a lot of play with my fence um, when I'm actually moving. I, I get, get the reading, but when I clamp it down, it kind of moves a little bit. So I probably need to maybe upgrade and get a better fence, I guess. Um, I don't know if the, um, the other types are better in, in doing it. But this is sort of fun. And I'm, I want to actually um, use this to um, attach to my drill press also and get reading so I could get the proper um, um, drill depths and things like that. Uh, these things you can modify. Um, if you take off the ends of these, you could actually cut them. This is only aluminum, so you could chop it down to whatever measurements you want. So it could it could fit to whatever device you have um, to um, to make a um, customized fitting. And I think that was it for my items. Yeah. All right. This is actually something I uh, saw your tablet, and it reminded me of this app. I think. How many people have smartphones? Most of us. And um, how many people have a fraction calculator app that allow you to do fractions very easily? One. I had, uh, there. there's a dozen or so on the, the stores, both for Android and iPhone. Most of them are really hard to use. This one turns out to be, it's free, for, for that's a big plus. And it's so easy to use, so let's see if we can... Uh, 
Let's see if we can. Can you see? Let me tilt it up a little bit. Is that good? Can you see the keyboard? So the keyboard is, well, let me just do one thing. So one and five eighths. So um, I hit the five. It says I should have hit. Let me clear it. One and five eighths. Plus, uh, where's the plus? Plus three and one sixteenth. Hard to do is and then equals. So most of them have this. You have to put in a number, and then you got to figure out how to con uh, move it over to the fraction side. This one has is unique. It has three uh, three sets of keys. So the this is the inches. This is the top fraction and the bottom fraction. What's that app called? This is called Fraction Calculator. Unfortunately, there are a number of apps called Fraction Calculator on the, uh, at least in the Android App Store. You can you see that it's the one that it's that one, and I don't. Can we get closer? It's not the one. If it's if it, yeah, there you go. Anyway, it is called Fraction Calculator Plus Free by Digital Alchemy. And I did. I, I checked out every one in the in the Android App Store, and this is by far the easiest to use. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you.